Well, we're going to see that the background, what people believed at that time, posed the challenge, an intellectual challenge for Plato. And here's how we're going to kind of explain the problem, the challenge that he's, uh, he has solving the problem. The Milesians come, across, come along, and what do they propose? They're talking about an RK, the, thing, the origin, the material principle. And what were they? Well, Thales has his water. Anaximander has, in Greek, to apiron, you know, the indefinite, that primordial milkshake of opposites and elements, you know, hot, cold, wet, dry, earth, air, wind, fire, whatever it is. And Anaximides decides it is air. And notice they're all committed to the idea, as we mentioned just a short while ago, that there is an objective and testable truth. It's testable by observation, by perception. Now, along comes Heraclitus, and he thinks there's a problem. Notice, remember, Anaximander thought there was a problem with Thales' explanation. Anaximedes thought that it was a problem with Anaximander's uh, explanation. He thought he could come up with a better one. Well, a Along comes Heraclitus, and he thinks that these three guys are misguided. Because notice, they're focusing on the material of the universe. But the material is changes. So they're trying to explain the changes in terms of the material. right? Wasn't that where Anaximedes ended up? That is, it was rarefaction and condensation, you know, spreading it out and, you know, forcing it together that turned the elements on the spectrum one into the other. That is, they were all one and the same, all air, but it was these two processes that did it. They were trying to explain why things apparently changed. Heraclitus said, gee, you know, they're kind of missing the boat. They think material is the explanation and Change is just something that can be explained in, all the, in terms of the material, but he's looking from a metaphysical standpoint that change is a bigger problem. And change is the nature of the universe. That's the basic thing, not the material. And in fact, he has, he has some puzzling doctrines to kind of explain it. He has the unity of op opposites. You know, things that seem contradictory about the material world. The road up and the road down are the same thing. Seawater is the purest to fish. It's a killer to people. So material has these contradictory properties. So material can't be the answer, but rather everything is in a state of of change that can be explained not and it's not random change like in mythology but there's a rational principle a logos an explanation an account of what's going on in terms of change and we didn't spend a lot of time on what that was but he did he did believe that you could explain that you could see change he sometimes uses the analogy of the bow that is if you you pull the bowstring and it comes back. That's how it functions from kind of the dynamic tension within the bow. That is, as in a bow and arrow, not the thing that you play in the violin. And all this is trying to explain the flux, which is the basis of the universe. Everything is constantly changing. Remember the big uh, statement that expresses this do doctrine is, you can't step in the same river twice. And if we remember Heraclitus's uh, student Cratylus thought you can't even step in it once. That's why he sat at the side at the banks of the river and just wouldn't talk to anybody but wagged his finger. Now notice, if you're thinking about what the Milesians thought, truth in the sensible world, the changing world, the world of appearances, well, everything's undergoing change. Everything in my perception is becoming something else. Nothing is, doesn't really exist. Remember, we're talking about metaphysics, ontology, what is. So Heraclitus thinks that the Milesians have come up really short in their answer.